So in the previous video, we showed that the, the function y equals c e to the x squared over 2 is in fact a solution to the differential equation y prime equals xy. And we could do this for any, any parameter c whatsoever. This right here represents what we call the general solution of our differential equation. General solution. That is, this right here gives us the complete generality of what we could expect. Where you could choose any parameter, c right here, and that would give us a solution here. And one thing that you're going to see is that for first order differential equations, you're going to have a single parameter you can choose, and every solution will be uh, based upon that single parameter. With second order, third order differential equations, you can have more than one parameter. Again, we won't get into that in this lecture series. Uh, I would invite you to watch a lecture series for Math 2280 at SOU to learn some more about that, um, or just other references online. But first order differential equations will have a single parameter general solution. Now, if a specific value for the parameter C is chosen, like in the example we did before, f of x was e to the x squared over 2. That's choosing the parameter to be 1. And another example we did was g of x equals 3 e to the x squared over 2. We chose the parameter to be 2. In that situation, we get what's called a particular solution, a particular solution to the differential equation. And so a big part of differential equations is about trying to first, we have to first, when we have a differential equation, we try to solve the general solution. We have to find that. This is, of course, the hard part. Uh, and in future videos, we'll talk more about how to find the general solution. What I want to talk about now, though, is that if you have a general solution, how does one find a particular solution? Like, how do we know if it's 1 for C or 3 for C or some other value? Well, if you have a general solution in hand, what you can do is you can use some initial condition. That is, you know something about the function. Like, maybe you know f of 0 is equal to some specific number. We'll call it y naught. And so if we have a general solution, we can find the particular solution using some initial condition, some initial value. And this is often referred to as the initial value problem. So in a previous video, we saw, um, we, we, we looked at the differential equation y prime equals 1 half y squared minus 1. And we saw that the general solution to this differential equation was 1 plus c e to the t over 1 minus c e to the t. So we checked that this was a, we, we saw that this was a solution to the differential equation right here. As this is a first order differential equation, there'll only be the single parameter c. And so we, we found the general solution. What we want to do now is actually find a particular solution using the initial value y of 0 equals 2. And so once you have a general solution, again, that's the heavy lifting. This is pretty, this is pretty powder puff at this moment. Uh, let us take the initial condition. We're going to plug in t equals 0. We're going to stick in t equals 0 in these situations right here. Right, and we're going to stick in for y a 2. That's all that one has to do. So y equals 2 exactly when t equals 0. So we have 1 plus c e to the 0 over 1 minus c e to the 0. And now it comes to simplify these expressions and solve for c here. Notice that e to the 0 is equal to 1. And 1 times c is just going to be c. So you get 2 equals 1 plus c over 1 minus c. I would clear the denominators at this moment times the right hand side by 1 over 1 minus c. You have to do it to the right hand, the left hand side as well. The 1 minus c's would cancel on the left. This then gives us 2 times 1 minus c. I'm going to distribute that and get 2 minus 2c. Two this would equal the right hand side, which is 1 plus c. Uh, adding some like terms, we're going to add 2c to both sides. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides. We end up with 1 on the left hand side and we're going to get 3c on the right hand side in which case then we see that c should equal one third like so and so if we take that and plug it into uh, the form we had before we're going to end up with so this again this was our general solution we're now plugging in specifically we're going to get one plus one third e to the t over one minus one third e to the t. Now, what we've written here in yellow is a particular solution. It solves uh, this differential equation, not just in general, 
it also solves it using the initial value of y of zero equals two. Now, in this particular form, I don't really like fractions inside of fractions. I get kind of messy. So if you times the whole fraction by three over three, uh, distribute these threes throughout, you end up with the format I actually like here, y equals, you're gonna get three plus e to the t over three minus e to the t. And so this actually represents the particular solution to this differential equation we're looking for. It's, it's, it's a solution to the differential equation. We saw that previously. And it also will satisfy the initial condition. If you plug in x equal, uh, t equals zero right here, you're gonna get three plus one, which is four, over three minus one, which is two. Four over two is two. Uh, and so this solves our, our initial value problem. So if we can find the general solution Finding, solving the initial value problem is super easy. That is finding the particular solution. It's a cinch. The hard part, of course, is finding the general solution. And so in the next videos in this series, we'll start to give some hints on how one finds solutions to, digital, to differential equations as opposed to them just appearing in front of you.